I had a couple of viewers asking us uh, could I do some tutorials on basic electronic troubleshooting or how to test various electronic components. So I thought I'd start off with something really simple. Uh, so I've got a mains lead here, I've got a couple of fuses. We'll test a couple of other things as well, but we'll start off with a mains lead. So I'm sure most people have got a mains lead. You get them in different types, you get Euro connectors and I can't remember what this one's called. Uh, one of the girls used to work with the while back used to call it a Mickey Mouse lead because if you look at the end of the uh, lead there, uh, she said it looked like Mickey Mouse. Anyway, right, we'll get on with it. Um, so you want you meet that in? There's actually two ways to test this. The first way I'm going to show you is uh, in continuity mode with the test meter. So you can put your meter onto beep or continuity. Check the meter's working first by touching the two probes together, and. If we touch one of the terminals on the plug and poke it in the terminals here, on one of them we should get a reading. So that means electricity is flowing from this terminal through the lead and getting to this point here. So we know that one's good. Also this one's the live which goes through the fuse here. So we know that the fuse is good as well. So if we go on to the next terminal along, which should be the neutral. Yeah. We've got continuity there, so we know that that terminal is okay. And if we go on to the top one here, which should be the earth, and we touch the earth pin, we know that one's okay. Now one thing we can check as well, you know, in case there was any damage inside the cable and it's shortened out, we shouldn't get any reading between any of these pins. And we don't, so that lead seems okay. Now, another way we could test this lead, slightly more dangerous, but if we uh, if you put your meter onto voltage AC, now this meter is auto-ranging, which means it'll automatically detect what voltage range it uh, it needs to be at to measure it. So you can pretty much throw you know a, a fair amount, I can't remember what the maximum value is on this one, um, uh, 750 volts this one goes up to. So. And in the UK, we're normally about between 230 to 250 volts, so that's fine. If you haven't got an auto ranging meter, start at the highest number first and then slowly work your way down. So start at, you know, 500, 400, you know, and, and that's the same for measuring any voltage until you know, unless you knew what voltage range it was supposed to be in, then you're okay. You can just go select that straight away. So I'll just plug this lead in. And... We know that those two are the live and neutral. So if I poke one lead in there and poke the other lead in there, and there we go. We've got about 247 volts there currently. I'll fluctuate a little bit with the mains there. So if I unplug the lead, the voltage goes away. So that's testing a mains lead. Now I've got two fuses here. which both look the same, apart from one of them is blown. So we'll go back onto continuity or diode mode, or beep. Check the meter's working first, and we'll try this fuse. And we have no reading. We'll just try this fuse below it. And we have a reading, so we know that this fuse is good, and we know that that fuse is blown. Now, a lot of people have uh, these adapters that they use for, you know, or wall warts as people call them. So this one I think uh, is for a battery charger. Uh, I'll just bring that a little bit closer there so you can see it. Now, if you notice there, it tells you the uh, the input uh, voltage, which it takes, um, is that 100 to 240? And the output, it says there, is 12 volt. And this symbol here means DC. So we can check that this is working. If we set the meter to DC, and you notice it's the same symbol there, the, the line, the straight line with the dashed line below it. So we'll put the meter onto uh, volts DC. I'll just plug this into the mains. Now, according to the specification, that should be 12 volts. And on most of these things, but not always, the outside is the negative. If you get them the wrong way around, it will just show minus 12 instead of plus 12. So, we'll put a meter in. And 
12.29 so we know that that adapter is actually working if I swap the leads around just to show you what I meant there you see it still shows 12 volts but it's just got a minus sign in front of it just telling you that you've got the leads the wrong way around or that's the way the actual plug is wired now I'll get an AC adapter because some of them like this one here if you notice uh, it says output 12 volts but then it's got a squiggly line here now that means AC so if I plug this one in and we get the other two leads now this hasn't got a plug on and we need to set one meter to AC which is the same squiggly line now because this has got a transformer in it the voltage will actually fluctuate with the mains voltage so we might actually get more than what it says or less but it should be round about 12 volts so if I connect the uh, meter up there we've got 14 and a half volts so so that's working as well the next thing I'll show you how to check is uh, bulbs now this won't work with LED bulbs, but it will work with the uh, old filament type ones, you know, like what you get in some cars still, and um, I think a lot of them have been banned in different countries now, well the 100 watt ones were in the UK, they were banned. So, if you put your meter onto uh, continuity again, and we'll touch on the side and the... So, that bulb's working. Now, depending on the size of the filament, you may actually get a slightly different reading. Uh, here's a little two-pin halogen bulb there. And if I touch onto there, and... So that bulb's okay. But if I touch on this one, you'll notice we'll get a, a bit of a different reading. Now, that's because the filament in this bulb is quite thin. So it's actually got a resistance, so it's actually shown that um, it's actually shown that resistance on the meter. If you put it on the ohms, you'll actually be able to measure what that resistance is. So that bulb measures about 800 ohms, because that coil of wire isn't a direct short. And like I say, it has some resistance. If the bulb was blown, you would just get that. You wouldn't get, you know, just say open a line or basically no, no, you're not getting any reading from this probe to that one. I mean, even if you touch it with your fingers, you'll you'll get a little bit of a, a resistance there because your your body has a bit of resistance as well. So, right then, that's it for this part of the uh, series. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you want to see more like it, uh, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comments section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.